Karen and Victor, I'd like you to speak to why you were up for investing the resources of time, energy, and money into putting on a free training day. And then I'll, I'll throw it to the other four on the couch. Cool. We'll start there. Uh, you want to talk first because I'll talk too much. Cool. Yeah, it won't stop you if I talk <laughs> first. But, well, it started when we went to Marshall Summit last November and went to our first free training day, the, the North... East? Northeast, yes. Free training to Northeast. Sorry, there's a lot of them now. I get confused on what they're all called. Um, and then, yeah, we loved it, had such a good time, and thought maybe we could do one where we live because we drove a, a long, well, no, we flew. We flew, we flew, and then we're driven. Yes. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we, we made a long journey to go to that and wanted to bring it back here. Yeah. It was a great, more succinct way to say how I would have said it. But no, it, it's it's always fun to get together with people and to exchange ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've been doing that in other various martial arts associations throughout my time training. And honestly, I felt more at home at the free training day, um, Northeast and the whole Marshall summit, the first time I was there, then at the one that the, the other kind of events that we've been at in the past where I'm like a no name and, I remember you saying that and I've been going there and I was yeah. like, there's something here that we need to recreate. And I knew as someone who's new to Kansas and Karen told me that there's a martial arts dojo everywhere everywhere i mean you can throw a rock from our school and hit probably two others or three or three maybe but yet none of them interact with each other none of them want anything to do with each other and that's just that just can't stand and so i figured we we could do it ourselves somebody so, has to go first yeah someone has to go first so and, and so to the the other four who all of you are looking like you've forgotten what hands do. You're just like, <laughs> ah, what's happening? I'm sitting on this couch. No, I, I was that was not Mark. That was not a request for you to grab Matt's knee. That's what happened uh, at breakfast. <laughs> I was thinking I was pretty relaxed. I was like, man, this is, we should record every episode on a couch. <laughs> right, you probably should. Uh, this is laying what, down. <laughs> What I, what I would like for the four of you to talk about is why <laughs> you, why it was important to, enough to you that you came out, right? None of you are local. All of you can drive to my house in much shorter period of time than you can drive here. But you made the choice to come out and I, I'd like you to talk about why. And actually start with how long it took you to get here and where you are from. Let's start there. No, it's not. I didn't ask you what rate of speed you traveled. We don't need to put that on the recording. I guess it means I'll go first. So <laughs> the trip was supposed to take about 18 hours in the car. I'll just say that. Um, Kind of to capitalize on why I came out, part of it was for the free training day event. That was the extra nudge kind of over the corner, that interaction, that new grouping, networking of people. Just so it's out here. But after Victor and Karen had actually opened their school, we had been talking a lot more, I'll say, since you came up and did the Art of Slow for us. And I'll say I don't like very many people. Whatever reason I like this guy. And <laughs> um, after he opened his school, I actually stumbled upon other schools in my area that are either closed or never actually got the initial takeoff. So I started finding gear and equipment to pass along to help them get started because new school is not easy. It's not cheap. Uh, <laughs> very appreciative yes. of all of the new pads. Yes, we appreciate it very much. I just want to... So you hit them a few times with them first. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, I got to push one over yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> three of them with the new pads. Uh, so what, what I what I'm hearing is it, a combination of self interest, but wanting to support. Absolutely. Um, 
I wasn't sure what I was going to think of my first free training day. I ended up enjoying it more than I thought and made a lot more friends out of it. I got people actually, I'll, I'll use the word friend for that. We talk on a semi-regular basis where it's just their ideas, how's your school, how's the training, what's new, and it extends beyond just training. Some of them we talk family, lives, whatever, work, and building that kind of relationship. And, and it, is it true in your area, kind of what Karen and Victor were saying, that that is not common, that you didn't have a circle of schools like that? Um, the ones Prior? that The ones that got together were usually within a certain association or you had to come from a certain lineage that would connect to one another. Otherwise, they didn't care for who you were or what you did. Somebody else? Craig, Mark, Kelly? Why are you here? All right, I'll go. Um, <laughs> I think my first free training day was, I think, the third one. Like, it was still a baby. I think there were maybe 40 people there. Like, I, was, I was going back uh, a couple days ago to see if there were was anybody that used to present that we haven't seen for a while. And every schedule I brought up, I was like, oh, there's Craig. Oh, there's Craig. Oh, there was Craig. <laughs> there's Craig twice. <laughs> um, no, it, it, I remember my first one. And it was, it was a special thing for me because I had never – branched out very far. Um, I had uh, some schools in the area that I was friendly with, but I was I was young when I was starting to do this and be a part of it. And most of them were Kempo? Most of them were Kempo, yeah. And um, like I hadn't even met Mark yet the first time I did one of these. Like it was a long time ago. And it was such a unique feeling. And one of my favorite things about free training days is it brings people to present that normally necessarily wouldn't feel like they should, right? That you, you get pushed a little bit. And, and I think that, that that's really cool because the, the excitement from the presenters at the opportunity to present something and just kind of get a platform is really exciting to me. So anytime there's a free training day, I do my best to make it and be a part of it. And I, I love YouTube. So anything you ask, I, I'll be, I think you asked me, and within like 30 seconds, I was like, I'll figure it out. I'll be there. Yeah. And, and we figured it out. And so, you know, I left the house at two 30 this morning, um, to get to the bus, to take the bus to Boston, to take the plane, to rent the car. <laughs> <laughs> I met Mark somewhere. I just, you know, we just in the airport. So yeah. In the like, airport. It feels somewhere. like a national lampoon. Movie. <laughs> Yes, it kind of was. It kind of was. But no, it was a lot of fun and uh, it, it, to get here today and then just to see you guys. Like, I was excited. And I think it's super cool that, you know, Vermont, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, Kansas, New Hampshire, like Vermont. There's so many, like, different places and states being recognized here. It's really cool. All right. Kelly? Um... What was the question again? Why, <laughs> <laughs> Why, am, I Why am I here? So um, I am here with uh, my daughter, which is exciting. She is um, kind of coming back to the martial arts, and I'm really happy for her to see uh, the this group. I think. I think. <laughs> it's her... Maybe not this group specifically. <laughs> it's a good asterisk. But, I mean, she. <laughs> She had seen me, you know, struggle several times with, you know, being on my own and the group I was with and not quite feeling right. And, you know, now she can see that there's a whole, there's a whole other world. There's a whole other group. There's a whole other way that martial artists can coexist and learn from each other and support each other. And it's not always about, well, you know, how many students do you have? And you know, how many stripes were on your belt and, you know, all that kind of stuff, which I think you you see in a lot of organizations and a lot of things and you just feel kind of stuck. Um, and so, you know, I know we have talked lots of times before about how different it all is. And it's really exciting for me to be able to show that to her. Um, it's, uh, I first started talking with Victor on the um, school owner mastermind. 
um, and and getting to know because uh, I think that's how we first met. Yeah, that was before. Mm, that was before Summit. Back. Um, and so you know, watching uh, like Matt said, you know, somebody who's beginning their school, and you kind of feel like you've been there through the beginning steps, and now they're branching out to this whole new thing, and you know, the fact that we got to meet at you know, um, Marshall summit and stuff. And it kept popping up and you kind of know, like when you're, when you're on Facebook or whatever, and this thing just keeps popping up and keeps popping up and you're just like, you know what? I think this is a sign. <laughs> I think it means that, you Good know, job with the marketing. Yeah, we need, we, I, I need to go. And, and <laughs> it also helps me as you know, the, the, so I was at your very first, I think your second as well. And I think I presented and then that whole, <laughs> stuff happened and you reached out and I was like, yeah, I don't have anything to present. And just like, you know, Craig said, it's sort of like the kick of the Katunas there and, you know, and says, get out there and do it. And so again, this is, you know, to support them, to introduce my daughter to this wonderful family that I've gotten to know and um, to push myself professionally um, as it's the first time, you know, that I've gone a distance to, do a presentation, which I just started doing notes a little while ago. Um, <laughs> but, you know, Wait, so, you have notes? Uh, a couple, a couple. I, mm. What about you, Jacob? <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, no, I mean, I think it's, and um, it's, it's been great. It's like a family reunion mm -hmm. and mix in with a little vacation. And I suspect for all of you that that family reunion dynamic is a piece, right? We don't really talk about that, but you know, there, anybody who's watching or listening can can hear, and if you're watching, definitely see <laughs> that they're, <laughs> that they're, I've intentionally, <laughs> so I know you all know that I cropped at the waist, <laughs> that I set up the camera. That means that they're not seeing Kelly speak. And I can't Aww. reach the floor. <laughs> I, I can't put my arm down. I need it with those old telephone books. <laughs> I don't even need to finish this because we've all just continued. So uh, last but certainly not least, Mark, why are you here? Well, she said, pretty much. I mean, this is my tribe now. I'm going to use the word tribe. I heard that years ago. And recently it started to come back again in readings and things I listened to. This is my tribe. And... I know from listening from other stories from you guys, we've all been through some of the same stuff with some of the same people. <laughs> but now it's a whole new, whole new life, whole, whole new thing. It's phenomenal. I wouldn't miss this for the world. This is great. Thank you guys for having Thank me. Thank you for coming. I mean, and it's, it's just part, part of the tribe. And if you're not part of the tribe, then jump on in. It's cool. It's a great big poop. We, we may or may not cut here, but I, I want to tack on to that because there, there's, a, there's an aspect to this that I think is really difficult for people. You know, those of us who have been to free training day events, we say things like, if you know, you know. If you've been, you understand. And it can be really difficult to try to explain how different it is. And I know enough about all of your histories to know that it was, or at least could have been easier to remain independent because of some of the interactions you've had with other people and, and pretty, you know, almost across the board, at least half of you, I know specifically who some of these people are that treated you poorly and made you think, you know, why am I going to stick my neck out again? But at some point you did, right? Like I know, Mark, Craig really encouraged yep. you, yep. but it wasn't one conversation from what I understand. It took mm -hmm. some convincing. So I guess that the question is for, for people, I guess as much for me, how do we express to people who have not attended this sort of event? How do we get them to see what the value is when so much of it is difficult to define. How, how do you expl express that? I'll do it quickly. Okay. 
What style do you do? Uh, primarily, yes. What style do you do? Uh, karate. 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 What style do you do? Harangda. It's Korean. We have Japanese. We have something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Craig. I, I, yeah, the the checks mix. <laughs> what style do you do? Taekwondo. I do Kung Fu and CR. I mean, look at this. And the key is, look at the attitudes it behind, behind the spotty faces. It's just not a facade. It's internalized. It's very hard to explain, but the quick way is Kempo, Karate. What, 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 is it, what is it about that? Because, you know, we could go to, there are, there are plenty of events, and I'm not going to pretend that there aren't events that are similar <laughs> throughout the country and, and likely the world. But most of them don't end with people driving halfway across the country at their own expense to attend one. There's, there's something, right? There's something that you all understand. What is it beyond the, the variety of styles? Kelly? I guess I can speak um, sort of from experience. Um, in the past, uh, I would uh, strongly support tournaments and stuff like that, um, bring a bunch of students, do, they'll do the judging. And then when I held a couple of events, none of them came. Mm. I mean, none of them came. Or they came and didn't bring students. And, I'll, and I was like, this isn't a two-way street here. You know, and they'd have excuses and stuff. And I was like, this? And other things that kind of happened where it definitely was a hierarchical system, which I'm accustomed to, but I wasn't that far from the top of the hierarchy. It wasn't like I was just down here um, and just felt like, okay, I'm just doing my own thing. If I'm not going to get any help, I'm going to do my own thing. And then, you know, you reached out and it took a long time for me to do whatever. And then um, you came and did a, a seminar and you decided to come along too, just for the fun of it. And so didn't, um... It was so cold. <laughs> I know. You were like, I was so mad. You were so mad. <laughs> I believe still the coldest day we've had in the 20 plus years oh. I've been in. I wanted to punch the air. I was so <laughs> mad. And it probably would have broken. It was probably so cold. Uh, if I remember correctly, the air temperature was negative 29 Fahrenheit. Oh. And with the wind chill, it was in the minus 40s. I was driving up there like, God, I love them. I know. <laughs> so yeah, I'll come to Kansas in 90 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, uh, Dennis even popped in. Dennis, Dennis drove, I think it was about seven hours of driving to hang out for two. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and I was just Sounds like that. <laughs> blown away. You know, and then you and Dep, you know, came up and, and did stuff. And you came up and did stuff. And I... I was like, this is really how it's supposed to be. So how would you contrast that experience with the, the other experience? How would you uh, define one versus the other? What, what's the difference? I was... <laughs> this is <laughs> um, No, they would still hug. You know, I mean, they've got the, the first... I was like, I was like a number. You know, I was like, okay, is this school coming? Okay, great. Check it off. And it didn't go beyond that. They never asked me to come to a testing. They never asked me to do anything. I was part of their income train, I guess, if you want to take it that way. Um, but here, I'm not because we're just here to hang out. We're, we're, and we're martial <laughs> artists. We're not, you know... I'm not just the instructor. I'm not, you know, I really want to, uh, I love what I do and I, I love the lessons that are there. And, you know, we had kind of, I think I chatted with you. It was like being at your school the other day and it was like, well, I would have said the exact same thing in the exact same tone, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, you find each other like the tribe. It's like mm -hmm. birds of a feather you know, and there's a whole, it's more the spirit I guess, 
that you know you walked in and it was just like these are my people. What what I'm hearing, I'm hearing the word obligation mm. versus choice. Right? The connections that you had that weren't feeling so positive were obligations that maybe even from each side felt like I've got to do this, I've got to go to this thing, I've got to invite this person versus what you're what you're talking about now is I want to or even I get to. I was there. I, I saw um, a little post. It was like if you change I have to to I get to and what a positive. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have to come to Kansas. I got to come mm -hmm. to Kansas. I I made a I made a connection last night as I had this one and Kelly and you don't even get a name. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even take a no, he doesn't. That's why it, was, it keeps him unaffiliated. We, <laughs> we had the pleasure of of having them in in our dojo last night in front of all of our students, and God, it scared all of them, and it was great. I loved it. I'm all about the mind games with the students and never warning them about anything. It's great. Um, but it wasn't until we all lined up for that youth class and you guys were like next to us on the black belt side of the room with all the students there. And I was like, I don't know how to address any of you in a formal martial arts setting. Oh wow! Because I'm, um, and, and as much as I think it's hokey and as much as I joked with my wife about this and to you about this, the stupid name tag thing. See in every other <laughs> context, <laughs> in, in every other context, and it's true, and it's it's like one of those things, like, I'll give you this point, but it hurts me to give it to you because you're right, but I really don't want to let you know you're right. Like, in every other context, in other... Do you know how often I hear that from yeah, people? Yeah. It's a common underlying theme. But every other time that I've been to another martial arts event and association, I've got good close friends in other associations. They were a title first to me, and I had to learn their name. I got up there last night, and I was like, Matt, I don't know what to call you to my students that would be appropriate. Whatever. To, to call you. So, so I said, oh, because I knew, I knew their names first, and then I got to know them in a martial arts context. Because when you met them, they had a, a name, name tag, tag on. They right. just had their first name. Right. With no, they were, they were the people and not their rank. And so with rank, when going to what Kelly was saying, like a lot of other martial arts or like associations, like, well, this person is grand master, sensei, whatever. You need to go and give them respect because that is the proper thing to do. Oh, okay. Whereas when everyone was just their first name, then you got to like naturally gravitate towards mm. the people who were your people, which just happened to be all the people, right? And, and, and meeting someone like that, like it's a choice. So it is a different context than, well, this is the founder of the thing or the person running this event. So you better go bow to that person and make sure that they know that you respect them as opposed to, oh, you know, that's Craig. Yeah. <laughs> we did an episode a long time Teaching ago. Teaching his pajama pants. <laughs> on, only, only when it's negative that I had pajama pants on under my uniform. He did. <laughs> Because I, and I was so angry. Yeah, it was. I'm mad again about it. I brought Munchkin's Munchkin. And she did. Yeah, that's why Kelly started calling me Munchkin. Yes, he thought he was so cold he couldn't hear. And I said, I've got a box of coffee and some Munchkins here. He said, did you just call me Munchkin? I'm like, no, yes. I didn't, but I guess it's going to stick. We did an episode a long time ago on respect because... Some of the same folks, you know, Kelly and I are both from Vermont and we've had similar experiences with some of the same people. And that's initially why we bonded. In fact, you know, I'm not going to belabor the point, but there was a specific event that I'm sure you're remembering the same one I am. And, and there were some things that happened that day. And that got me thinking, and it, I don't remember how long it took to do the episode, but it was on the idea of you, you can't make someone respect you you can make them mimic actions of respect. But what I'm hearing from you, Victor, and what I, I think, what I suspect all of you would agree with is there is an inherent respect that is defaulted to, not because of title, not because of rank, not because of lineage, not because of style, 
but because these are other human beings and I'm going to offer you respect first until you don't deserve it. Is that, would you all agree with that? Yeah, I think yeah, so. To say. I, I, I want to point out, because I'm thinking back to my first one, and the atmosphere is very different now. I don't know if you would recognize that, but it feels much different in that when it, when I first went to my first free training day, it was nobody knew how to act. So we all defaulted into what we knew. And so, I mean, back then the schedule, we still, all, all of our titles were still on it. I had titles on there. Yep. Right. There were, and we referred to each other as that. And for those of you who have ever trained with me know that I hardly ever wear a uniform or a belt. I was wearing both that day. <laughs> like I, and I was like very specifically, my uniform was pressed. Like it was. And people were putting their titles on their name tags back then. Yeah, we have the name tags, but there was still, you know, it was Sensei. What I probably would have referred to myself as Sensei Jeremy back then, yes. even on my name tag. Yes, and... because I was scared about trying to make that change. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if people were ready. I I wanted it, but I didn't know that people would accept it. And, and it's it, it's slowly like I, it's slowly and overnight, right? Like at the same time, because nothing happens overnight. But it felt like there was a dramatic shift all of a sudden into what it is now. And I would say to people who have never been before, the free training day is somewhere you go to, to, to remember your greatness because everybody is there just for the love of being there. And so it's easy with titles and, and politics and the arts and drama and, and the day to day of, teaching or running a school that there are going to be days where you're like, man, I suck at this. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like everybody experiences that. And then all of a sudden you're sitting on a couch with people who all went, just nodded their head and went, yeah. <laughs> right? Right? We recognize that. And the bonds that grow out of that, it, it's immeasurable. The, the point that I haven't heard yet necessarily in the way that I'm thinking of it in the event I needed something, the people on this couch I can reach out to and I know that they will respond immediately and they will do everything in their power to help. And there's no questioning that. And you're not just talking about martial arts. No, no. In life, I've talked to a lot of you guys, uh, you know, um, when I needed something outside of the arts, you know, or the amount of check-ins I get. Hey, how you doing? We haven't heard from you in a while. You know, that sort of thing. And, and I think that that's important. Um, because it just helps you remember that you have something and in a normal event that wouldn't happen. There's no space for that to grow. Anything to um, actually I'm going to piece together some of what they said that Please. kind of made me think of something that a society that's kind of faded where it used to be that whole, it takes a village to raise a kid. Your training is your baby, what you do with it, how you move with it. Sure. And this is your community. Everyone's there, not out of anything else. And there's no obligation. They are there just because they want to be there too. So their appeal and their attachment to you is genuine. They want to help you reach your goal because that's going to help them reach their goal. And it just kind of bounces back and forth because you're there for each other, whether it's training related or not you kind of build that bond. So your need now for whatever it is training wise, they're going to help you find that connect to get you there. And it's going to keep expanding that circle, expanding that community. The, the thing that I'm hearing and, and we'll wrap up with this thought, I, I'd like you all, if, if you have pieces to add to this by all means, but what I'm hearing is within free training day, we have, not necessarily by design, but instinctively, I think we all knew it was there, taken away a lot of barriers, the barriers that people put up between each other, right? Rank, title becomes a barrier. Lineage becomes a barrier. Money becomes a barrier. We've taken away a lot of those barriers and what's left? Vulnerability. And it means that people who are willing to be vulnerable about who they are, and I don't mean in a, in a a lack of safety way, and I don't mean in a judgmental way, but in an authentic way, 
right? I, I think we all know at least, hopefully, at least one person, hopefully the people watching or listening know at least one person they can be vulnerable with in, in a sense of being authentic, being their true self. And as I've gotten to know all of you, and I, I don't know all you, I don't know all of you equally, but I think I know you all well enough to know who you are. And what I see on the couch is authentic you. The jokes, the, the playfulness. The knee touching. The, the knee, right? <laughs> there's, no, there's no fear of... <laughs> there's no fear. That was the first smooch on a whistle kick episode I've ever seen. It, it was. It also takes a lot to, to make me pause and go, I <laughs> for words. Good job. Win. Win. <laughs> You're being you, you're being honest you. And when when people show up to a free training day, the ones who have been there before understand, I don't need to bring these barriers in. I'm gonna be authentic me. Mark is gonna be Mark and all of who Mark is and, and so on down the line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I singled you out for a reason, my friend. <laughs> and, the, and the other people who show up may start with some apprehension and creating those those barriers because it feels safe initially, but they fall away quickly. So that's the part I, I'd like to wrap on. And if anybody wants to tack onto that, those barriers. And, and would you agree? Is that is that a good way to describe it? Yeah, I think especially when you pay to go to an event, you're specifically looking to find your money's worth, right? And so I know a lot of people who go to an event and they will specifically train in the things they know because they want to get better at it. Um, the first time I ever tried Capoeira was at free training day because I wasn't paying for it. Tomorrow I'm going to learn how to teach gorillas or something and I can't. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so excited to do it. And, um, you know, it's, like, it's just super fun in that way that you have the freedom to try because you're not losing money without the money it all becomes electives right um just a couple of things i'd like to because you had mentioned craig about going and it um remembering that you're awesome yeah right? it was that kind of you know i it's almost like when you go it helps to remember why you started your martial arts it brings all that newness and excitement and you know just wanting to learn and it and again it kind of strips everything away because you're a white belt again in many of the things that you're doing because you have no idea i don't know the gorillas are we having a gorilla there i you know yeah, but it's I all so you know and, <laughs> and for me um you know uh rank was always very important and I'd always tell my students that I'm actually very nervous in groups I'm, unless I have my super suit and that's my belt. Um, I don't always wear my belt when I teach anymore. Um, you know, and, you know, even just being here and talking this. Because you don't need that barrier. I don't, right. I don't need, I don't have to stand behind it anymore. I can yeah. stand up on my own two feet. Yeah. Um, the belt's not holding me up anymore. Um, I wear the belt and not the belt wears me, maybe kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I'm hugging you after this episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, so those have been, you know, that's huge for me. And and it's because of this. Um, it's because of free training day. It's because of all the all the stuff Whistle Kick does and we do and support each other. And um, I'm very grateful. And love you all. Anybody else want to? I'm looking right at you, Victor. No, I, well, you're looking at me. Why is everyone looking at me? I'm not. Because you're the talker. I'm because of you. Yeah. I'm here because of Karen and the gorillas. Yeah. Oh, yes. You're going to be so disappointed. That's not true. Are we, are we, are we going to rename you Diane Posse on the schedule? I want you to know Please. something. There's absolutely no way I'm going to be disappointed tomorrow. If you, you just have to say the word gorilla. Okay. <laughs> then, okay. Then we're good. We're good. I will. 
Um, but I was just gonna say, I really appreciate that these whistle kick events are ego free, um, or, you know, it seems as much as possible, because that's something that's always bothered me with, you know, esteemed martial artists, it always seems like there's too much ego and at free training day, everyone who is presenting is also going and learning from everyone else. So it's it's like I may not have as many, you know, years of martial arts experience under my belt, but we're on like a more equal playing ground and I, I feel like I am a peer rather than an underling. You're not an underling. You're so a peer. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, can't wait until you know the rest of the curriculum so I can not teach. That's the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if you would say it, it's different being a woman in this and actually feeling on the same field, yeah. playing field. And I think that's something for anybody who's listening who is a woman to realize that there is definitely a, a difference. Yeah. Um, there is no, there's, there's no boundary. There's no, I don't even know what I want to say. If you take a look at the presenter rosters for free training day, and this is not a thing that we seek out, but you will see, it seems to average 30 to 40% female presenters across the board. And if you take a look at a typical, um, eclectic martial arts event, I do, I rarely see that percentage of female mm -hmm. representation. Uh, I think this is a good place to wrap. We'll probably record more in a little bit, but thank you all. And I'm going to hit stop. <laughs>